Um, second area we wanted to talk about now, you know, once you get your quarterback seeing the space, you know, the way you want them to and understanding their, their eye progression. And, and like you said, working through that hard focus and soft focus pre-snap, uh, post-snap, and then the moment of the throw, um, obviously pressure can influence how you go about your progression, right? There's the space that you see and the way you want it to play out, but obviously whether it's losing a matchup up front or just, uh, you know, the defense is bringing more than you can block. Uh, how do you teach your quarterbacks to handle pressure uh and and give them a sense of confidence in those situations yeah i i number one i think it's a collective effort between specifically the quarterback and the coach to understand the intent and the expectations of that stuff i I, because you know to me with pressure we're very uh we're we're together in that regard of understanding exactly what we need to do one We'll start with, to me, is the knowledge of the protection. Uh, You know, where are my weaknesses in that protection? And that quarterback needs to be schooled in understanding that, you know, and where's my quick or or let it be my hot answer. If we are hot, you know, if they're bringing more than we can handle, then what is my hot? But also, like you said, all of a sudden, if if it breaks down and we're not hot, but we're getting pressure, let it be from just a four man or a five man rush because someone misses a block. Where's my quick answer. They need to have those answers and be able to verbalize that once again, very quickly in, in, and we drill it during, uh, during our classroom setting, like if, in, in any time, like, Hey, what's your quick answer here? Very quick. So they have to verbalize it. And I think that's important. I think one of the other ways that we do it from the, the pressure sense is it goes back to this, this scan and the cues you know, understanding the contour, understanding the depth, the alignment, you know, different things like that, the different threats, where they're capped, um, understanding the alignment of the linebackers, where they're plus and minus, because we understand that certain pressures also and certain looks, you know, those pressures are, are, are tethered to uh, coverages. So we know that from looking at it. We also do it from a breakdown sense. I think that helps is, so we can group them very, very quickly. Let it be a five man, six man, seven man pressure, right? We know that, you know, where is it, an, is it a single mid? Is it, you know, an edge pressure? We have to understand that we're going to be protecting together. But the big thing is this, you have to recognize it early on and then understand where your quick or your hot answer is. That's the first part of it, you know, go ahead. Any questions on that one? Yeah. I mean, more a comment, but I think, you know, understanding protections is, to me, probably the most important thing from a quarterback's perspective. And, and you know, obviously you only have so many hours with these guys, you can only do so much. But I think, I think you really do need to spend time with your quarterbacks, whether that be at the high school or the college, the college level, you know, getting them in the room you know, really having great communication with your, with your coaching staff. It doesn't have to, you know, your quarterback shouldn't just be sitting there with your, with your offensive coordinator or your, or your pass game coordinator or whatever that situation is. Um, you know, the guys I've been around, the, the really good ones have, have spent as much time in, in that room as in the old line room as they have with the, with the, uh, with the, in the receiver room. So um, I think the big takeaway there is, is if you, is to teach protections as well as you're teaching your, your concepts, because it's, you know, on the defensive side, the pressure is tethered to the coverage on the offensive side, the, the protections cover is, is tied to the, to the concepts. So um, I, I, you're, you're on it. And, and I, I'll show you a clip of something like that in regards to that. Cause I, if, if the quarterback is not schooled in where his weaknesses and with in any type of six man, seven, you know, five man protection, stuff like that, I think it's important even because we have to understand like here, how fast, you know, how fast can we recognize that pressure and which pressure is coming and when can we throw the, the ball down the field versus our hot or quick answer? Right. And here's one of them to me. Um, Let me just, uh, there we go. Right. This is one of our play action uh, protections, let's say. And it's, it's more of a, certainly like a seven, eight man type of protection. So he knows what his answer is, right? His answer is a deep throw to speedy B, right? That's what his answer is. 
And we know that, hey, we got to take a quick five and a hitch and we got to let it go. That's it. We got to let it go and we got to make it count. And those are the things this play in particular to me shows the knowledge that he see. he's going through a systematic scan, right? He's there. He sees that he comes across on the high, high, he comes to the field, he's coming back down and he sees that safety. He knows when the safety is coming from that defense. He knows what it is. He's already confirmed it. He knows it's man and he knows it's zero. His, and he also knows very quickly already that where's his answer at. And now there's no more, more manipulation that needs to take place because it's mano y mano. We're right on top of it, right? It is all about, now seeing if we can get that answer the way we want, right? So as we see it, now he's getting, and this is a play action, right? And number one, he for, it's, it's always FTF, forget the fake now. It's over. It's over, right? We don't have to do that. Don't have to fake, just get it gone, right? Get into your sweet spot where that's going to be the backside, right around that backside A-gap area. That's where your room's going to live in. Get to it, set, and let it go. And he understands that. Now, once he sees that, lets it go. He knows that body position of here, where that is, and he's going to lay it on up, you know. And he's going it from the high. I think it's a great job. It's a great throw. It's early with air. And he knows he's going to keep it high. He wants him high, and he throws him high, right? So there, I think that's one of the things that shows from his scan, because he immediately goes to where he has to go. There's another one that's a different type of protection to me where all of a sudden now we're, we're releasing the back and we're in a four by one and understanding now all of a sudden as we scan through this, we see that flat top area. We know, we, and to me, hey, you better recognize now. And, and he is recognizing. He sees it. He knows it's zero. He knows where the protection has changed. And you'll see as we came in and protected it this way, right, his, the free guy is going to come off the edge. That's the furthest guy. That's the furthest guy where we're because we we would love to be able to have the quarterback uh, throw and complete a throwing motion and not have a free guy in his face if we can in regards to it to be able to knock the ball down if we can, right? And when he does that, he'll slide ever so slightly to make sure he's elongating that time and he's not going to have to be able to hey the impact time just you need to elongate it a little bit. Right. And we know that it sometimes and a zero pressure. Right. All of a sudden he's got a blitz peel. Uh, all of a sudden he's got a blitz peel guy right off the running back. We put pressure on him. This is in the eastern final. They drop the coverage. You know, this this not week one. Right. This is this is the eastern final. And that that individual, all he's thinking about is going to kill the quarterback. Well, he's not going to be able to. All of a sudden we're where all of a sudden the peeler is not there. He doesn't do his job. So we, then we get a big play on it. So from this play, he's getting a chance to get a free guy, a free guy because of the protection and the knowledge of the protection where we're sliding it here, we're inserting here and there's the free guy. And now I'm going to veer left, right? Just ever so slightly, ever so slightly to elongate the time and let me get the ball off. So those are the things that I think are important in recognizing pressure, understanding it, understanding, like you said, Braden, that's very important, that where his free guy is and understanding it. Here's another different version, different protection. Now, all of a sudden, hey, it's a cover zero look, flat top look, easy to see, right? But also understanding impact time, right? Where's your free guy? Is he an add-in guy? Is he, if he's an add-in guy, how close to the line of scrimmage is he? Because if he's close to the line of scrimmage, you're going to have an issue of throwing any deeper routes. But on this one, we know where the impact time is. We usually take, uh, would like to take a three and a hitch and get it up to speedy on a post, right? And we're able to do that. Why? It's because he recognizes pressure. He understands pressure. He's went through scan and he also knows his drop and to be able to know where to throw that ball. Because you've seen a couple of times in cover zero that you wonder why when the ball's over here or there and the quarterback put it this way, the quarterback and receiver have to understand where that ball is. Where is it going to be located? 
and located more specifically on the field, meaning, hey, we're expecting you to take a high pylon angle or front pylon angle here. Here we're looking that you're going to be right between the middle of the goalposts. So that's where the ball's going to be. And so we understand that, we practice it, and then hopefully we execute it in such a way. So these are a little couple tidbits of understanding and emphasizing the scan, understanding your protection, and deciding on trying to get those big plays, even from a no huddle sense and that kind of thing to be able to see this, check the protection, know your quick answers, and have a protection awareness, and then all of a sudden to try to get a shot from, from a bunch setting, right? So I tried to show you a couple of different ways to handle pressure. Now, one of the ways that we talked about, yes, is from the quarterback, understanding where his quick answer is, where his hot is. But also I showed you to get a chance to, hey, we can check the protection too and understand that, hey, what's our pressure plan for the week? And if we have the ability to check this protection, what are we going to do where our answers are? Yeah, I think, you know, as a, as a former offensive lineman and, you know, I've been coaching running backs most recently, you know, being involved in protections my, my whole career, it's, it's music to my ears that the quarterbacks can understand what we're doing, right? Because there's nothing oh, yeah. worse as an offensive lineman. Like if you bring, if you bring seven and we've got six or if, or if we got just a 5-0 line and, and you, they bring six, we know we're going to turn somebody loose, right? And I can't tell you how many times – and it is hard in high school because you're dealing with, you know, limited time um, and, and getting guys to know, you know, what all the things they need to know. But it would always drive me nuts as an offensive lineman when, hey, we got our five – and I know like no offensive coordinator creates a play and goes, yeah, I hope they don't blitz here. We have nothing in it for if they do. Right. And, but getting those things like you saw there, you know, the majority of the plays you show us are big plays, right. It's an opportunity offensively. Like if we can do one or two things, right. You know, the payoff for us is going to be that much bigger because they've invested so much in the pressure. You know, the one, the one clip there is so clear. You can see, uh, I think it was when you guys went for uh, 30 or 41 to 32, you know, and you got the back and the flat, uh, the quarterback goes from one side of the hash to the other. It's like, it's that simple. It's, it, it's very simple when you're sitting here talking about it, when it's done right. But that quarterback understanding, like you said, you know, knowing where the free guy's coming from, that sounds so basic. But when, you know, when, again, when you're seeing it through the eyes of the quarterback, I think being able to understand that gives you so much more confidence, right? Because if oh, you're yeah. not, and, and if you're not sure, all of a sudden it seems like the free guy's coming from everywhere. Right. If you can't eliminate possibilities, everything's a possibility. Um, exactly. You know, we talk about the same thing with with our running backs. Right. When we're talking about when guys walk down and the protections change and the centers change in the protection, um, you know, or the quarterbacks change in the protection. If you can't eliminate possibilities, everything's a possibility. Right. And if you right. got seven choices, no one's a good decision maker. So you really you know, I think that's a great point. And even just a starting point for high school coaches. And I know for our summer program where me and Braden have worked together, we stay pretty simple in protection so that we can understand it in every situation. Um, you know, and I think that obviously you need, depending on the routes you're throwing, you need different types of protections. But, you know, I think that that's a place to go where, hey, if you can, if your quarterback can understand the demands on him when you get pressure, all of a sudden that pressure situation is a positive, right? Whereas, you know, like I said, if you can't eliminate options it seems overwhelming I, I, yeah I don't think like even at any you know any level really in, in like you alluded to the high school level it doesn't have to be complicated I mean it doesn't have to be complicated at all as long as he understands it I mean it could be as simple as hey we're going with these five and and that's it you know and as long as I know that you know the, you know the defense has to guess right and if they bring pressure I already know it. You know, we systematically break the defensive down because defense wants to gain that pressure and, and what, what pressure. And then I want to know what the, I look at what the intent of the pressure is, but you know, the thing is to me, you know, at any level, long as you can get the ball off and you're able to do it in a controlled and, and poised manner, right. And you have a completion and they don't get near that quarterback, that's breaking down the defense systematically. Slowly, slowly, and you're going to you die by a, a thousand cuts, you know, and that's just the way it is. They're expecting some pressure. Let it be – I'm not saying they're always expecting a sack from pressure. I'm not saying that. They're just saying maybe internal pressure. They're just yeah. taking the, the uh, quarterback off his spot. That could be the reason why they're doing it. 
they're not here to try to overload a pressure, that's fine. But long as we find a completion and we understand it, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated at all. Um, and, and a lot of those protections are not complicated. They're, you know, it's, but like you're saying, it's all based upon knowing that we protect together. We protect together. The, re- the receiver has, has the, as important of a job as the running back. The running back has the most, has the most important job as the uh, offensive lineman. And the quarterback does too. They all have different roles, right? But the receivers, for instance, they've got to know possibly you know, when that quick answer is going to come to them, when their eyes come. But they also have to have the responsibility to separate from a defender. You know, that's, you know, that's their job. And to be able to throw, because a lot of times in those pressure situations, the quarterbacks, it's a wall of a wall of flesh in front of them. They can't see it. And you have to, you only see it so, so far. And there's trust into those throws that they're not always seeing totally clear. And there's a responsibility for the receivers to make sure they have separation. So it's, it's together we protect, you know, and we show different, you know, different responsibilities of that, but we have to make sure that each group has, a, they have a lot of skin in it, right? There's not just, it's not just the, the offensive line always gets blamed, but it has nothing to do with the offensive line. A lot of way, times it's the quarterback holding the ball. He doesn't know where who he's supposed to go. It might be the receiver. It might be the running back. We call, we protect together. That's why we meet together. That's why we always hearing the same things. in a lot of ways, when we're talking about protection, we're going to make sure that we're all on the same page because when these high pressure situations arise, the biggest thing is communication. You know, are we able to communicate efficiently enough on doing those things? Or are we asking them to do too much? That's why, you know, trying to keep it simple and saying that that's the strength of it. Yeah. What are you looking to, to teach the quarterback in terms of recognizing that that pressure is coming? So whether that's defensive body position or defensive structure, you know, if you were going to tell a young quarterback or, or a quarterback coach, hey, you should be looking for these two or three things, what, what would those be when you're looking for pressure? One is, you know, depending on the secondary, we, we communicate it from who's, who's capped and who's not, who's topped off, right? Like meaning this uh, from that cover zero types of uh, pressure, you know, it, well, has the free safety moved out and he, is he topped off the Sam, you know, it's showing, it looks like, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, if it walks and quacks like a duck, well, got you know, it's a duck. It's coming, right? So are we seeing those individuals capped off? Another example would be if we're getting weak side halfback pressure, right? You know, you, you're going to usually see from that aspect if it's cover zero, right, or is it a zone blitz, right? And it's it, it depends on the team, but you're going to be able to see in your scan what's the Sam doing, what's the free safety doing, what's the weak half. Many, many teams are on a string with that. They're on a string. So understanding the depth at which they're playing, where the Sam is. Well, if he's, you know, seven, eight yards off and he's way off and then you see the free safety over on the track on the hash and you've seen the boundary halfback pressed up and, and also his body language is, you know, he's over here and he's off looking at you trying to peek. Those are all things that they're telling you that they're coming. Right. Also, the alignment of the backers are huge, especially on zone blitzes and stuff. Right. Because they all of a sudden they're not in their regular base way that they're always in it. And then all of a sudden one guy's plus out all the way over here. He's not now all of a sudden stacked on the offensive tackle, which is totally different. Those are the things that we clue them in in that regards. One is from that scan. Right. From those guys, those Sam, the free safety and halfback in a lot of ways. But also uh, the plus and the minus of the linebackers' alignments are, are all keys to be aware of. And you, you'll be able, from film study, be able to see that. Depth, alignment, all those kinds of things go all, all into it. And especially during uh, the guys that are most immediate blitzers, what are they? You know, and then you'll be able to uh, eliminate possibilities. You know, if the SAM's off, the free safety, or if the free safety's over with the SAM, see who's capped who's topped off, where they're activating their defense from. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, that's a, as a guy who's, you know, I'm coaching defense or I wasn't going to be coaching defense this summer. I'm thinking, looking at all my pressures, not basically how's them, 
has them covered. Um, anything you want to add to that one, Braden? No, I think, you know, for, for the high school coaches and, and, and at the, at the young, even at the youngest level, if you can find a key for your quarterback that will help him eliminate possibilities as early as possible, I think that is, and then you can really build from there. I, I think for, for those guys, whether, it, you know, if you, if you start with where the free safety is, if he's on the track or not, and then you can really help build a, a progression for him um, and going back to building an offense for your quarterback, you know, if, if you can help him identify those things early and help him eliminate possibilities quicker, it doesn't have to be the whole picture right away. Mm-hmm. It, it can just be one thing and, and you can build on that. So I think from a, from a coaching perspective, if you can do it that way, it'll be super beneficial to your quarterback. 